Just a quick note before we get started, this video is part of our mathematics and statistics module in our FU review course. If you would like access to the complete module right now, as well as other FE review modules, a practice exam, and live Q and A's, make sure to go to the link in the description and go to our FE exam academy. Once you go to the link and join, you'll have access to our full support in passing your FE exam. If you find this video useful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future updates. That being said, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Hello, welcome to the first part of single variable calculus in the mathematics and statistics module. In this first part, we are going to be covering some problems on limits. So as always, make sure you try these problems yourself, but when you're ready, we can get started. So this one is pretty straightforward. The way that we are going to evaluate this limit as x approaches two for this function is just by plugging two into the function. So I'll show you what that means. Basically, where we have an x in the function, we're going to plug in the value of two everything else is going to stay the same we're going to end up with 4 plus 3 and that is going to give us a result of 7. so if you take a look at the multiple choice for this one the answer is going to be d so moving on to number two now we need to evaluate the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x equals 4. so in this case we were given a constant instead of a function what that means is that the value of f of x is not going to change when the variable x changes. Therefore, if we need to find the limit as x approaches 5, we know it's going to be 4 because it's not going to change depending on the value of x. It's just we were just given a fact here, f of x equals 4. Therefore, this uh, could be any number here. In, in our case, it's the limit as x approaches 5. That's not going to change anything about the function. So it's just going to stay as a constant, which equals to 4. Therefore, we can know that the multiple choice answer for this one is going to be A. So now for question number 3, we need to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over x. So this one here can help us recap one of the properties of limits that gets covered in calculus. If you remember, this should be a pretty straightforward problem, but if you don't, I can give you a reminder. So as long as we don't have any problems in our numerator, if there's an infinity in the denominator and we are evaluating the limit, we can call that equal to zero. So in this case, for this one, the answer is going to be B. So moving on to number four, now we have another limit as x approaches infinity, this time with a different function. So once again, we are going to plug in the value that x is approaching into our function. In this case, when we evaluate that, we're going to end up with infinity over infinity. But the thing is, this term, infinity over infinity, is actually indeterminate. Basically, this is indeterminate because it doesn't provide enough information about the value of the limit that we are trying to evaluate. However, what we can do in a situation like this is see if there's a way that we can simplify or rearrange the function in a way that helps us do that evaluation. So in this case, we need to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over x minus 2. So we are still going to have the limit as x approaches infinity, but we are going to simplify the function in a way that works better for us to evaluate the limit. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor an x, and we're going to end up with x times 1 minus 2 over x. So now we're going to cancel an x term out of the denominator with the x term in the numerator. So now we're going to end up with the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over 1 minus 2 over x. So as you can see, this function is now something that we can work with. Because if we plug in to the equation, we just put the infinity where the x is, we're going to end up with 2 over 1 minus 2 over infinity. That term is going to end up being a value of 0. So in this case, we ended up with 2 over 1 minus 0. That is going to be equal to 2. Therefore, our multiple choice answer is going to be C. 
Moving on to number five, now we need to evaluate a limit as x approaches zero for this function. So let's go ahead and try to plug in zero for x like we have in the first step of the last couple problems. As you can see right away, we're going to have a problem with this fraction because there's a zero in the denominator, but also the numerator is going to end up being zero as well. So we're gonna end up with zero over zero, which is not going to work for us because obviously we can't have a zero in the denominator that is going to give us an undefined value. Therefore, we're once again gonna to try to change or manipulate our function to see if we can get it to be something that is friendlier to evaluating the limit. So I am going to erase this part right here. We already know that it's going to be equal to zero over zero if we plug in. So we already know that. Now let's just move on to rearranging our function. So this is a function right here. I just rewrote it. So in order to rearrange this equation, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to get everything in the numerator into like terms. So let me show you what I mean. So the denominator is going to stay the same. We're just going to make changes in the numerator. So like I said, we're going to get everything there in like terms. So I'm going to start with the one over two plus x. In order to get it to be a like term with the one half, we're just going to multiply the entire fraction by two. We're going to end up with two times one in the numerator and then two times two plus x in the denominator. Then for the one half, we're going to multiply everything by two plus x. That's going to give us two plus x times one in the numerator. So we'll do the same for this denominator. We'll multiply it all by two plus x and we're going to end up with this expression. So after we multiply out the two times one and the two plus x times one, we're going to end up with our numerator for the big fraction looking like this. So now that everything in the numerator is in like terms, we can just do a subtraction for what we have in the numerator. So now we are going to end up with a fraction that looks like this, and our next step can be to cancel out this x right here with this x right here. So now we can see this function is friendlier to our evaluation of the limit as x approaches zero. So let's go ahead and try to plug in zero and see if that will work now. So we'll just go ahead and evaluate by plugging in. As you can see, that actually ends up working out and we end up with negative one over four as our result. That means that our answer for the multiple choice for this one is going to be A. Moving on to number six, now we need to evaluate a limit as x approaches three of this function right here. So once again, let's try to plug in and see what happens. We're gonna end up with three squared minus nine over three minus three. That is going to end up giving us a result of zero over zero. Once again, that is not going to work for us because this is going to be undefined. So we are going to have to manipulate our equation to see if we can get it to work for us in a better way. So looking at the function we were given of x squared minus nine over x minus three, you might be able to see that there's a pretty straightforward thing we can do to get it to work better for us. So due to the fact that we have x minus three in the denominator, we can try and see if we can factor out the numerator and then maybe cancel out some terms in this function. So let's go ahead and try that. So we can factor x squared minus nine into x minus three times x plus three, and then we still have x minus three in the denominator. So you can actually apply FOIL to x minus three times x plus three just to see that it does indeed give us x squared minus nine. I did it over here on the right side. But more importantly, we can cancel x minus three from the denominator and the numerator, and we're going to end up with the limit as x approaches three of x plus three. So now this is going to work when we evaluate the limit because once we plug in three, we're just going to end up with three plus three, and that is going to give us a result of six. So in this case, if we take a look at the multiple choice, you can see that the answer for this one is going to be C. So moving on to number seven, we have one more problem similar to the previous one, just for extra practice. 
In this case, we have our limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. So if we plug in to this one, we're going to get the same thing as before. We're going to get 0 over 0 because as you can see, 2 squared is 4 and then 4 minus 4 is 0 and 2 minus 2 is 0. This is not going to work for us. But because we have the x minus 2 and the x squared minus 4, we can factor out like we did previously and cancel like we did previously. Like I said, this one is just going to be for extra practice. So let's just go ahead and do the solution real quick. I'm going to factor out x squared minus 4. That is going to give us x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then we're still going to have our x minus 2 in the denominator. We're going to cancel this one with this one. And then we're going to end up with the limit as x approaches 2 of just x plus 2. Now this is not going to give us any problems when we evaluate our limit. So let's just plug in. We're going to get 2 plus 2 and that is going to give us 4. So the answer for the multiple choice for this one is going to be A. So this brings us to the end of this first part of single variable calculus, which was a review on how to evaluate limits. The next section is going to be a review of derivatives. So when you are ready to move on to the next part, we will see you there.